And we're ready whenever you are, Mayor. Good evening and thank you for remotely attending tonight's city council meeting. The camera in the council chambers is set up to show those attending in person tonight. The platform we are using has a raise hand feature. You will notice the picture of a hand in the upper right hand corner. When we reach the point in the meeting where the public has the opportunity to address council, you can click that button and be given your opportunity to address council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scully. Here. Councilor Dillaba. Here. Councilor Fisher. Here. Councilor Kennedy. Here. Councilor Powers. Councilor Reesh. Councilor Scamperly. Quorum present. Councilor Scamperly asked to be excused tonight for personal family matter. Councilor Powers asked to be excused tonight. And Councilor Reesh asked to be excused tonight because he is ill. Is there a consensus of council to excuse Councilor Scamperly, Councilor Powers, and Councilor Reesh? Reesh? Yes. Yep, go ahead. Sure. Uh, we do not have any presentations tonight. We do not have any public hearings tonight. So this brings us to personal appearance. At this time, if anyone attending remotely would like to address the city council, please use the raise hand feature. The first individual is registered as Michael Tooley, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears your line is open, sir. Yes, thank you. Good evening. I am Michael Tooley. I live at 214 Hamilton Street. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My comments tonight respond to those made about me at the last city council meeting. First, I thank Councilors Kennedy, Powers, and Scamperly for speaking on my behalf in support of having certain language removed from the city manager's press release posted on the city of Augensburg's official website on December 28th. At the last meeting, Mayor Skelly did not address the concerns I asked city council to consider, but instead made comments to the effect that while I am well respected, I continually use incorrect numbers in my comments to city council. He stated I use incorrect numbers from one side of an issue to support the outcome I want, and that because of my status, I should do a better job and come to city council with correct numbers. Yes. Members of city council, I can assure you the following. One, when I refer to historical numbers pertaining to city finances, I find my information at the city's official website. Looking at city's past audited financial statements and or adopted city budget reports, which include actual detailed revenue and expense for prior years. I trust these figures are accurate. Two, when I attempt to forecast future revenue and expense for a given period, I look at prior financial history for information for trends, and I refer to information shared with city council by the city manager and or the city controller. In both circumstances, I attempt to interpret the information available and in making judgments. I do not develop a preconceived idea and then make up numbers or skew numbers to fit them into such a judgment. People can look at financial information and form differing opinions about the same set of numbers. That doesn't make the numbers incorrect. When forecasting, people can come up with different estimates of revenue and expense based on their interpretation and the information at hand. When you ask the city controller for estimates, I trust the information she shares with you and I use it in part as the basis for judgments I might comment on regarding city finances. I assure you, my motives are honorable. Next, based on comments made by the city manager at the last meeting, I think there's confusion about one concern I brought to city council. As Councilor Powers indicated at the last meeting, my concerns about public comments made by city officials are specific to the city's official website, www.augensburg.org. 
There was reference at the last meeting about other social media sites where discussions occur about city affairs. Please know that I'm not active in any of these other media sites. I do not participate in discussions at these sites. The concerns I express to city council are about communications posted at the city's official website, www.ogdensburg.org. The following statements are included in the city manager's press release posted on the city's official website on December 28th. Quote, please don't be fooled by the relentless local government disruptors to use this as an opportunity to advance criticism of the proactive changes taking place in the city and don't rely on the baseless opinion letters written by self-proclaimed experts expressing disappointment the city leader, leaders no longer pander to county officials determined to destroy the city, close quote. In my view, this type of editorial comment is not appropriate, appropriate at a municipality's official website. It may be more appropriate at other social media sites or as a letter to the editor in local newspapers, but not on these city's official web. Ask me one way Facebook posting. The point I was trying to make was that there is no opportunity for rebuttal to be posted on the site. I personally find another statement made in this press release troubling. The city manager states, quote, 2022 is an opportunity for county residents to replace each and every corrupt and incompetent county elected and appointed official. Please encourage your family, friends, and neighbors that possess high degrees of integrity, concern, Mr. Tooley, we seem to have lost audio. Mr. Tooley, can you hear me? Mr. Tooley's appearing offline at this time, Mayor. Would you like me to move on to the next person? Hello? Oh, he's back. Yes, sir. I'm not sure where I got. We lost audio, Mr. Tooley, but you are back now. Please continue. I don't know where I got um, cut off then. You were discussing um, the the um, letter the on. The, yes. The statement on the, the paragraph related to uh, opportunity for county residents to replace county yes. elected. Yes, okay. right thank there you. is where you were cut off. All right, thank you. So anyway, um, so the city council believe this is a statement allowed by the city's official website. Is it an official position of the city of Ogdensburg? And how would you react if a neighboring community published a statement at their website seeking the defeat of current city council members who might run for re-election in 2023? Would you think it an appropriate comment at their municipal website? As I stated in the past, it's up to city council to determine if editorial comment is appropriate on the city's website, and I suggest it is not. Thank you. The next individual is registered as Margaret Haggerty, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears you are self-muted. Ms. Haggerty, it appears you are self-muted. She may have hit it in error, Mayor, because I'm also getting a notification that she's not attentive, and that usually means that someone has just let it play and they're not actively sitting at their keyboard. We'll go to the next one. I do not see any other hands raised. Next, we have our consent agenda that claims is enumerated in general fund warrant number two dash 2022 in the amount of $962,301.65 and library warrant number two dash 2022 in the amount of zero dollars in capital fund warrant 
number 2-2022 in the amount of $286.50 and community develop warrant number 2-2022 in the amount of zero dollars and community renewal fund warrant number 2-2022 in the amount of zero dollars as audited be in the same hereby are ordered paid as a new I'll second it Kathy, could you call roll, please? Mayor Scali? Yes. Councillor Jellaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Approved. We have one appointment tonight. Mayor, if I can, um, on my agenda, I have correspondence. Is there no correspondence? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, that correspondence is uh, not going to be read. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to appoint Barb Barlow to a five-year term on the Board of Assessments and Review, term to begin January 24, 2022, and end September 30th, 2026. I so move. No second. I'll oh, second. Ah. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Approved. And this brings us to the item for a council action. Our first item of business will be read by Director of, uh, Director of Public Works, Shane Brown. A resolution allowing the St. Lawrence County Highway Department to be held harmless for providing shared services such as paving, signage, road striping, plastic, blasting, and any other routine maintenance activities to the city of Augsburg. I'll make a motion for that. I'll second it. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Councilor Dillaba? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by City Comptroller Angela Gray. Mayor, I'll take it. A resolu <clears throat> resolution providing for public notice and public hearing with regard to an amendment to the administrative regulations. I'll make a motion for that. I'll second it. <laughs> Kathy, would you call the roll? Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. And just so people know, this is just on uh, like a change in the rates for federal meal for meals, whether you go on when you're traveling. Approved. Thank you. Our next item of business will be read by City Manager Stephen Jelly. A resolution authorizing and approving settlement agreements to an action related to the opioid crisis regarding several defendants. <clears throat> Whereas there's pending litigation against several defendants regarding the opioid addiction crisis in which the city of Augensburg is a named plaintiff therein and has the opportunity to sign out to several <clears throat> to settlement agreements. Whereas the action is against <clears throat> several defendants, including manufacturers of opioids, distributors of opioids and chain pharmacies and alleges several causes against these defendants and whereas in the best interest of the city of augsburg to resolve this matter with respect to defendants without further litigation and entered into proposed agreement as such shall settle all allegations against the defendants and avoid protracted litigation now therefore be it resolved that the execution and delivery on behalf of and in the name of the city of augsburg by city manager stephen jelly or his designee of any proposed agreements is hereby authorized and city manager stephen jelly his designee is hereby authorized subject to the recommendation of the Opioid Litigation Council and city attorney approval and direct, directed to execute the proposed agreements in a form substantially similar thereto and to execute other documents as may be necessary and appropriate to effectuate settlement with said defendants. I'll make a motion for that. Or if you got it, yep. then I'll second that, please. Mayor. Just for, for council's information on this, just what I'm asking for now is just the authority to move through these with the city attorney. We There's a significant legal team uh, that we're part of. Honestly, our our concurrence or not concurrence with these agreements likely won't have any any matter. So to, to keep bringing each one of them to council, I mean, I'll bring them to you for information as they get settled. But as far as 
trying to brief each one and go through the the, the details, I think it's it, it would really be you know not a, not a good use of council's time. Thank you, uh, Kathy. Would you please call the roll? Mayor Scali. Yes. Councilor Dillaba. Yes. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Approved. Yes. Uh, there is no longer a need for our next item of business, so we'll move on from there. Our next item of business will be read by City Manager Stephen Gelly. A resolution to provide for public notice and public hearing with regard to a local law to amend the city charter to remove the residency requirement for the position of chief of police. I'll make a motion for that. Yeah, I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Jalaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Before the vote, I just couldn't get unmuted in time. Go ahead. Um, can I ask, um, I was just wondering, since this was just done in the past year to make the residency requirement, what is the thought process of why um, that you would like it reversed? Well, it's kind of similar to when you guys changed the charter vote, uh, you know, taking five votes for Sarah Curry. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you uh, just have a reflection and change your mind on that. No, that's, I mean, I'm all for this, having the best person there, not necessarily living in the city. I was just wondering if something happened that changed anybody's perspective or if it was just something that was coming back up to the table. No, I mean, I was not insinuating anything. I was just simply asking if something had happened that I wasn't aware of. That's all. I, I, uh, you know, we have a great uh, candidate and, uh, you know, we want to open up to to that possibility of uh, having him. Okay, that's fine. I, I was just curious. I'm fine to vote now. Thank you. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Yes, so I'll start over, please. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Approved. <coughs> okay. And, and this, that brings us to old business, and we will begin with uh, Director of Planning and Development, Andrea Smith. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is just a, just a follow up to the last meeting where the Planning Board had given. Um, a recommendation on legislation for uh, commercial cannabis in the city of Ogdensburg and it wasn't really it was presented as a presentation and so I wanted to offer the council an opportunity to give me any feedback or direction to take uh, forward to the planning board if necessary or just hear how the board wanted to move forward um, Given the the light attendance this evening, this might be something you want to discuss at a later meeting. But that's that's the intent of of it being listed on your agenda. Yeah, we could. You know, we probably will bring it up in a future meeting because we are kind of missing a few people. Um, you know, for me, uh, I don't know a lot about this subject. You know, and uh, so. Um, I'm going to put my trust into the staff, you know, to bring all the recommendations to the planning board and uh, and then go from there. You know, I don't really have a lot to offer on this. I think you know, placement will be important, right? Placement. And other than that. So this is for selling the stuff, right? Yes. It's not for growing it. No, it's it's for any commercial uses, which does include consumption sales and um distribution so i i have been contacted by and i mentioned to steve before we were contacted that possibly a person might want to come in here and hire two to three hundred people and open up a place to grow mm -hmm. so is that what this is about too same thing <coughs> i mean these regulations would impact where you could have right. nurseries and greenhouses yes okay. I think what Andrea is looking for, she handed out a pretty extensive uh, 
recommendation packet from the planning board. So if, if all of you could just uh, please take a look at that and, and, and drop us a note if, if you've got anything you'd like to discuss. Otherwise, we'll put it back on the agenda for the next meeting when everybody's here. We're really just looking to get feedback. As we talked, uh, the state, you know, is I, I think is picking up steam. They're talking about this time next year having having their machine going. I, I suspect there's going to be political pressure to do it sooner than that. So I think Andrea's leading way forward, you know, getting us ready. So if, if the state starts moving quick, we're not uh, having to catch up. So I think it's really important. Council take a look at this, uh, these recommendations, and we, you know, we start to to make sure we're we're posturing the city for what they want. I know Councilor Reesh had some concern about well, the state's going to regulate. Just let them do it. If you if you look close at what's uh, what uh, Andrea and the planning board are, are putting, you know, forth. It's really, you know, the specifics of how we want things to function within the city once they're given licensure, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, again, just uh, just just looking for feedback. This is one of those topics that I don't want to get down the road in our six or seven months and and be, you know, accused that staff's driving the train on this. We're, staff's putting out the information. We're asking you to take a look. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. If you don't care, so be it. I, I just need to hear from from the seven of you what you're, you know, what what you'd like to see from us on this so we can gin it up uh you know in an official format as far as uh changing you know rules regulations procedures etc thank you um now city manager stephen jelly will provide uh, a general update yeah i'll just give you a quickly uh from uh, my uh takeaway from the meeting with the school board uh last week and then uh councillor fisher and councillor uh, kennedy were both in attendance so i'd like them to to kind of talk through their concerns or what they heard, but uh, one good meeting uh, accomplished what I what I'd hope we'd accomplish. Some members of council would parlay their uh, ideas and concerns and thoughts to the school board. Uh, the school board certainly did the same with the members of, of council uh, present. Now, I think key takeaway uh, for me was <clears throat> they uh, they they really want a law enforcement, uh, an active law enforcement officer in the in the school district. Uh, they certainly prefer. It to be uh, an Augsburg police officer. Uh, there's, there, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, Nicole and Steve, we're getting some background noise. Um, I think there was no question uh, about that. Uh, that that they, you know, they really would like the city of Augsburg Police Department to be the supporting uh, entity in providing the the SRO. We had some good discussion on um, a pending uh, program uh, that's been out there uh, for some time to kind of change the makeup and the way this. Our program is funded, uh, move more to a safety officer, uh, state funded sort of program. Uh, but again, I think as everyone noted at the meeting, that's something that's been out there for a little while. Uh, likely will be addressed at this coming legislative session with a little more vigor than it may have been in the last couple sessions, but it certainly isn't uh, law now. So uh, my my takeaway here was we've got a, an immediate uh, job we need to do uh, we don't have an SRO train, won't be able to get someone trained for quite some time, but I don't want to cease the liaison function with the school, ensuring we've got preparedness and, and having the presence uh, in there in, in some way. So I think uh, we've budgeted the the funds this year uh, to be able to provide some support. I'll work out the finite details. Again, it won't be full SRO support because we don't have someone uh, trained specifically, but there, there are plenty of functions that that position can do without out taking that course is not a requirement for them to, to be in there doing some interaction and working. Uh, but I think ultimately for me, what council needs to be prepared to address is what are we doing going forward? Uh, we have an agreement contract that says we'll notify the school district by April of every year if we're going to do it for the uh, f the preceding uh, school or the, the subsequent school year coming up. So I really think for me, it seems like right now we need to do the best we can do uh, for the school for this school year, uh, but council needs to make a decision uh, in the next uh, 60 days from my perspective so that we can notify the school if we intend to carry on and do this starting with the fall session. And if we don't, it gives them enough time to seek their second option, which I believe would be the St. Lawrence County uh, Sheriff's Department. So with that, um, I'll, I'll, if we could let Councillor uh, Kennedy and Councillor Fisher talk about what they uh, took away from the meeting. <clears throat> Did you want to go first, Steve, or did you want me to? Can you hear me okay, Kathy? Yes, I can hear you fine. Wait, um, more so what I, I, I took away from the, the meeting was that um, the school district is very desirous of having an OPD officer 
in school. Um, we, we do have a contract with them that, you know, I believe it was through the 2024 school year, but I'm, I don't have my notes from that specific meeting in front of me. Um, you know, I spoke on behalf of both counselor powers and counselor Scamperly, um, that, you know, the three of us would really like to see an OPD officer in the district, um, and stated the various reasons why, um, I think that, you know, um, we could be a really good partner uh, with the school district going forward. I would like to see, you know, the, the relationship improve there. And I think this is a great way to start it. Um, and um, I believe, uh, like, I think it was mentioned that there were two officers that would potentially be interested in sharing the load on that. Um, we talked about the benefits of having two officers, um, utilizing them, whether it's a half a year, um, each person or maybe by semester, things like that. So I think there's some great ideas that flowed throughout the meeting. Um, but I definitely feel as if um, the school district was very clear on their desire to have an OPD officer first and foremost. So um, I think that, you know, I support that. And um, going forward, that's what I would like to see happen. You good? Oh, yep, all set. I muted myself. Okay. Um, I think it was a good meeting, and, and you know, I think council needs to support the school system. Um, I, I support having an SRO out there this year. Um, I want to revisit in April. I want to see what this legislation does. Um, for the people that don't know what it does, it, it changes the whole um, – the criminal procedure law and the educational law, it's, if you look it up, it's, it's a Senate bill number 4286. And it allows for police, retired police officers and peace officers. So you could be, you know, a, a correctional officer, you could be a police officer, um, you could take this job on. Um, also in the bill is it establishes um, grants to pay for it. So it's kind of, in, it would be crazy for uh, the school system to be paying us when they can be paying through grants. And instead of having one officer at a time in a school, we could potentially have three, especially if the federal government is going to pay for it um, or the state government. Um, I prefer somebody in each one of the schools. I think they're all as important. Um, and if we're talking safety, that's that's true safety. Everything else is just your, your piecemeal on it. So in the future, um, like I say, I'll support it this year. Um, you, you, you know, I'll vote 100% for it. But if this legislation passes next year, no. And is in, in a conversation, we, we, we talked about the possibility of different uniforms. And I know their desire is to have a, an OPD officer there. Um, personally, anybody in a uniform and in a badge that signed on for this job is, is as capable as anyone else. And my conversation was, is if the county was actually adamant that they wanted to do it, being under one umbrella, under the sheriff, in one SRO program in all the towns and villages, including the city, would be, um, you take your orders, marching orders from one guy, and there'd be one one set of policy and procedure of what's expected and what gets done. Um, I, I I do believe somebody should that we should have people in the school, um, but I don't think you know one's enough. We can't afford three. Um, but if if this passes, like I say, if it passes, I w I won't support doing it next year unless they go this route because anybody that didn't go this route would be crazy and that's, that's about where i sit on it so put it on for the next meeting if we need to i don't think we need to since we have a contract so just get somebody out in the school well, thank you both so <clears throat> again <clears throat> excuse me we we really approve the authority and, and the funding area in the budget so at this point um i will instruct the police chief to to do as much as he, he can do um, with the with the personnel, the, the limitations of the training. 
uh, and we'll we'll work closely with the school to uh, to make the best of it uh, that we can. And uh, but I will I will have this back to council uh, very soon. We we won't be able to wait again because of the the contract language talking about April for the for the year. We'll have to address our intentions uh, going going forward. So uh, I'll have this back uh, on, a, on a very soon uh, council meeting for discussion for the the 2022-2023 school year. Um, does anyone else have any old business? Does anyone else, uh, does anyone want to bring some new business up? <clears throat> and this brings us to items for discussion and we will begin with city manager Stephen Jelly. Uh, Mayor, just two things uh, real quick. First of all, um, all of council, I've got a bound uh, copy of the uh, city 2022 adopted budget uh, for you. We'll, we'll get those to you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is also uh, up on the website for uh, everyone's knowledge. Uh, second, just wanted to um, discuss a little bit tonight, but since we've got three uh, folks absent, I'll continue just to send you uh, some additional thoughts on setting up for the goal and objective uh, work session. I don't have anything more to discuss than what I, I sent out. I think we could have at least one meeting where uh, we look at the current documentation that we have now, um, uh, which is our really our, our 2020 adopted 2022 adopted budget, which is our work plan for the, the year, along with the draft uh, comprehensive development plan. I think we've got quite a bit of stuff out there, but I'd also like staff at this first session to be able to line up for council you know all of the significant topics that they're working on i think that you'll see we already have what i think are significant priorities uh moving forward for 2022 um i'm a little concerned this is this type of action from my perspective we ought to be doing in the middle of the summer uh before we start the budget process so that we understand council and the community's goals objectives etc and then and then the staff uh, moves to create the resourcing package to support that but i think the uh, idea here is just that we're all on the same sheet of music with what the priorities are and what the what the projects and things that we want to be worked on. So I'd like the opportunity at the first session uh, for for again for us to just review what we already currently have. I'll have each of the department heads prepare uh, you know the top projects and initiatives that they're currently working on. So council gets a a good feel for everything that is that is out there, and then from there determine. You know, you know, is there something we want to align as a higher priority, a lower priority, or adding something to it? I just will, will caution everybody. I don't want to get into a situation, and I won't allow the staff to be put in a situation like we were last year. We we cannot take on undertakings like a comprehensive development plan when I didn't plan for resourcing for it. it it's just, it's not possible. It's not appropriate that I don't have resources, and it's not appropriate that I I, I throw the staff a major project without without any warning. It's not appropriate that I plan to open a beach um, when I didn't talk about that at all during the budget session and didn't have any resources. This budget does not contain a dollar of discretionary spend, not a dollar. So for any new ideas that come up that require funding, we're gonna have to make a determination what we're not doing in that budget and redirecting those funds or council reappropriating more funds. So I just would, would like to make clear what we're doing here. The other thing that I'm concerned about is I saw an article in North Country now that talked about this being a town hall meeting. I didn't get that in uh, from, from our discussion and I read the penance again that we're, we're hosting a town hall sort of meeting for this. I certainly don't have any issue with public uh, listening to the work sessions, but if we're gonna do an initial work session, we need to be able to give uh, council all the information, um, let them digest that, put it in some kind of an organized format, and then I think appropriately have a public hearing or, or some kind of public session where people can call in and, and comment on the plan. Uh, Etc. But I, I do just want to say again, I I want to I want to be careful. We're not trying to reinvent the budget wheel here. It, it's January. We just put our budget in place, and uh, we we did some things last year that made it difficult to maneuver in the budget. Luckily, we had some discretion uh, with some things we didn't do uh, last year. But um, the comprehensive development plan, for instance, is something that would be farther along had that been planned for appropriately. So. Um, I'm, and I'm trying to, to get that, that done as quickly as possible. So uh, thank you, Mayor, and I'll yield back comments for any other council. Does anyone else have any items for discussion? And this brings us to citizen participation. At this time, anyone attending remotely would like to address council, use the raise hand feature, you'll have two minutes. 
The first individual is registered as Margaret Haggerty, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears you are self-muted. Ms. Haggerty, it appears you are self-muted. Mayor, I'm still getting the um, notification for inactivity. Oh, she's Haggerty? here. Can we can you hear, hear you. Now. Yes, we oh, can. Okay. I, I'm sorry for some technical issues on my end. First of all, shout out to all the city workers and lay workers who have been maintaining our community during this cold snap. Um, I'm sure it hasn't been easy and uh, got a grateful community. And second of all is um, a letter that I had. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. My letter was incredulous. That's the word I would use to describe myself right now about a person who compromises the safety of local citizens in retaliation for the departments not agreeing to have things go the way of that same person who, by the way, is the but the same person. It is personal attack. Uh, no, it, this is just like we need to make sure that that the person knows about OSHA and NFPA uh, and the laws, and also realizing that our tax dollars are paying this person who has attended way less than ten. You want me to cut it off, sir? Else? I do not see any other hands raised. Okay, we uh, we're going to have an executive session, but um, not going to bring that forward with so many counselors missing. Uh, so um, I'm going to uh, pass out the executive session board. Uh, so. Uh, um, I'll make a mo motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is that Steve? Yes, it was. Opposed? Adjourn.